A little later than usual, but we got good reasons for that. We talk fantasy, the ultimate spot for your fantasy football knowledge right here on Gons of the Media. Kyle Ray, Chet Davis, Tom Goslowski, Gons here with you. Before we get into some fantasy football discussions and where our guys were across the globe, it felt like the past few days, we want to thank our sponsors, Mohawk Honda. Right now, we're getting closer and closer to 2022 popping up on your calendar. What kind of changes are you making for yourself? Maybe it's the new ride. The holidays are just around the corner. You don't want to get broken down to the side of the road and call on Christmas Eve. My car sucks. Help me. What do I do? Do you even want to imagine that? You don't have to. Mohawk Honda can help you find the vehicle you're looking for. Take advantage of the Kelly Blue Book offer going on right now. Or you can drive over to Freeman's Bridge Road, get a new car and money in your pocket. Trust me from experience. I know. Pilots sitting in the driveway right now. Do the same for yourself. Glenville's a wonderful spot. Kyle and I always tell you how great it is. Do yourself a favor. Visit that spot in upstate New York, no matter where you're listening. Get the new ride. Whether it's our guy, Greg Johnson, Cam McKenna, Lindsey Harrington, Jake Hot Sauce, Doyle's now stalling. Come on. Come join Godzilla Media. We want the interview. Mohawk Honda, where we always go out of their way to please you. We always do it, too. They always do it, too. They're always going out of their way to please you. All right. Let's talk about where you guys have been, Chet and Ray Ray. I'm going to start with Chet first because you guys were to trip together to see some NFL action this past weekend. Yeah, the hangover is still real. Um, <laughs> it was a wild 48 hours. We uh, woke up first thing on Saturday morning, flew down to Dallas, Texas, um, but we were in Fort Worth for most of the weekend. It's one of those weird things, you know, Dallas Cowboys, but they play in Arlington, which is closer to Fort Worth. It's one of those weird things. We say we went to Dallas. We didn't even look. Only time I was in Dallas was at the airport. But um, we're doing this thing where we're going to try to check off all 32 NFL stadiums. Whoa. This was part of that that adventure. Kyle and I were uh, late additions to this, so there were already a few behind. But, uh, yeah, this was the first one we were all together. couple takeaways. Uh, Jerry's World's unbelievable. I mean, it is a spectacle. Like, even when you're driving up from a mile away, you're like, what are we going to? Like, this is a football stadium? Like, it is massive. Uh, which, with that being said, it was very interesting. When we were walking up to the game, then we get in the game, I, I just kept noticing a lot of Bronco fans. And I'm like, man. And then we sit in our seats, and we were I mean, we were in the clouds of Jerry World, which was still an amazing vantage point. Uh, it was 50-50. 50-50 Bronco and Cowboy fans, and it was it made it a little bit more clear because they're wearing the orange jerseys, so you can really see it, you know, scattered throughout the stadium. And after meeting with some, you know, diehard fans, they hate it. Ever since Jerry World, Jerry's World opened, uh, everyone wants to go check out their team play in Dallas. So he said they have not had a home field advantage since that stadium opened because everyone wants to go check it out. It's like a bucket list oh, thing. Yeah. They don't have a home field advantage. They don't have a home crowd. It's 50 50. You can't even tell. If you were blindfolded, you wouldn't be able to tell who the home team was. It's that plus the combination of how big it is. The sound doesn't resonate like it would in a smaller arena or smaller gym in the basketball comparison or anything else like that. I want it. And the Cowboys got spanked. Yeah. So, that. <laughs> I want to get Kyle's take on that because he has not one but two trips he's done to the sports calendar. But just to follow up on something you said there, Chet, uh, I guess I'll ask you first. And then, Kyle, you mentioned the NFL 32. You guys want to hit them all. What's your number at right now? So personally, Personally, I am at, oh, boy, four. I'm at four. So uh, AT&T Stadium, uh, the Superdome, Heinz Field, and uh, I don't know what it was called when I went to the Buffalo Stadium. That was – that would have been uh, Ralph Wilson. Yeah, exactly. That was 10 plus years ago. So those are the four for me. All right, Kyle. Give us your personal number, your thoughts on Jerry World, and where in the world you were just yesterday. So my, my personal stadium count is three. Uh, MetLife, uh, New Era, Ralph Wilson, now Highmark, um, and now in that AT&T. So, um, yeah, to echo what Chet said, it, it's a spectacle. I mean – you see it coming in from the the airport. You're like, oh, there's Jerry. There's Jerry's world. You know, you're like, that's a big stadium. You know, looks cool. But then you're getting up to it, and you're like, wait, I can see the top of this stadium. We're five miles away from the stadium, <laughs> and then you and then you get closer and closer, and you're just like, you're literally your head's just going like this, like just looking up, like, 
oh god that's a stadium <laughs> but you know it, it was crazy it was definitely a different experience just because like chet said with um the the fan situation um i'm used to tailgating like crazy i mean even at metlife it's a good party scene it's a good tailgate scene the tailgate scene in dallas sucked uh you walked into the into the season ticket holder parking parking lot i mean out on the outer ring there was tailgating other than that not a thing and we were we were at the gates and everything an hour and a half uh before kickoff so like there should still be tailgating going on and there wasn't so it was definitely interesting from that vantage point. I would recommend going to Jerry's World if you can get it, um, get into it because it was it was a blast. It was an awesome stadium to go go to, and even with as hungover as I was, uh, Chet can attest to that. I was gonna say, I was gonna say, <laughs> uh, were you disappointed you couldn't tailgate? Because I don't think you could have even stomached one beer. Uh, I think I got my first drink in me at like five o'clock after the game. So <laughs> <laughs> I got a little, little hammered on Saturday, um, but obviously awesome, awesome time there. But then I flew back home Monday, got in Monday evening. Um, and like Chet said, it was a wild 48 hours where Chet and I, I think got a combined uh, in 72 hours, eight hours of total sleep uh, in that time span, uh, which was awful. So I got home at about, I think we've landed, what, Chet, 3.30, 4.00, 3.30, somewhere in there. Um, my wife went to go drop the dogs off, and I slept from about 5 p.m. until 8 a.m. the next morning. Uh, <laughs> can, you guys, can you guys still hear me? Because I have, like, an amazing frozen picture on my screen. Yes. Yeah, we can hear <laughs> Ken, Chet, yes. Am I frozen on your screen? Yep. I love yes, it. which is – which the best part of it, you're watching on our visual sign, Chet's frozen while kind of like judging Kyle, like through sleeping and uh, like being overserved. Just a judgment face left there. If you just are audio for the rest of the episode with that judgment face, I think it's probably going to be worth it. I'm going yeah. to do something. I'm going to stop the cam. Oh, it's still back, baby. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what you guys get to look at for the entire show. Love My debonair stare. Um, but. <laughs> But after that, so on, then on Tuesday morning, me and my wife uh, rode the train down to New York City and spent uh, yesterday and three quarters of the day today down in New York City going to the Champions Classic. So watching Michigan State, Kansas, uh, and Duke and Kentucky to kick off the college basketball season, which was a lot of fun. I was I went two years ago, COVID hit, now we're, they're back, and it's an alternating thing between Indy and New York City. Um, but just such a good time, lots of Lots of cool people there uh, because, you know, it's not the kids, it's not like a, a, like the rowdy people. It's like people you could actually go and, like, talk to. And uh, we sat next to a couple of Kansas fans who were cool, um, a couple of Michigan State fans, a Duke fan and a Kentucky fan. So cool mix, awesome, awesome venue. And I think we learned a lot that uh, Duke's legit this year. Duke's going to be really, really good, and Kansas is going to be scary good. Uh, McCormick, uh, Bing, Marcus Bingham from Michigan State gave him a little bit of troubles, but if McCormick plays how he's expected to play throughout the year, Kansas is going to be unstoppable. There's not a lot of people that are going to be able to stop Abaji and McCormick at the same time. Yeah, look at that. A little college basketball insight on We Talk Fantasy. Right, Kansas inside. is old. Yeah, they're old men. They got a bunch of super seniors. And you mentioned Duke. Yeah, that last run for Coach K before John Shire takes off is going to be a very impressive team. Uh, I'm going to let Chet start with this because we can't actually see Chet. So I'll just continue to intro just in case Chet like is mouthing something and we can't hear it. And I think it's better if Kyle doesn't start with this because we've had such a nice nine minutes into this podcast. I don't want Kyle to have a meltdown about his poor Buffalo Bills because it was the Cowboys getting upset. It was the Bills getting upset. Now, technically, Green, Bla Green Bay was playing with Jordan Lump, so that's not really an upset. Kansas City was favored in the game, but it was an upset filled day. The Falcons take down the Saints and more. Uh, Chet, from a fantasy perspective, what, if at all, does it mean about these NFL upsets happening in week nine of the season? Man, I really thought, guys, you were going to end with the upset in the uh, Godzilla Media Fantasy League, where the undefeated <laughs> team, myself, somehow lost to a team that started Henry Ruggs from jail. And, oh, and, and who was the other one that was started? Marlon Mack, Ryan McCarthy of the No Credentials podcast. A weird way to promote your podcast, Ryan, by starting those guys and beating an 8-0 Chet Davis team. But sure enough, here we are talking about and promoting you. Unbelievable. But it was one of those weird weeks where, uh, I don't know if you want to call them upsets, but a lot of duds from big names. Like, essentially, there's, what, three players that balled out? 
it was Nick Chubb, Jonathan Taylor, and Justin Herbert. Everyone else was kind of just pedestrian. I, I, it's one of those weird weeks where you saw a lot of low numbers, and it wasn't because of bye weeks. It was just guys weren't producing that the way they've been producing for the most of the season. So uh, from the upset side, from the actual football, um, Kyle and I, I think we're both thankful that when we were at AT&T Stadium, ironically, we didn't have great service. And so we were trying to, you know, look at scores and trying to stream our red zone and couldn't get any of it to work. But eventually, like, you know, maybe like for one second, I'd see it. I'm like, oh, wow, Kyle, the Bills Jacksonville game is 3 3. Oh, wow, it's 6 6. Oh, my God, it's 9 6. Like, it was one of those back and forth where I was, I was getting it sporadically. Um, but that's what makes football so great. And that's what makes fantasy so fun is you go into a matchup and you're like, oh, man, I'm favored to win by. 30 and you lose by 10 and that happens in fantasy and it happens in real football so that's why we you know gear up every sunday and like uh that famous al pacino movie any given sunday baby yeah i mean this, love it Kyle, yeah how do you feel go ahead <laughs> this week in fantasy was weird so I, I like to reference our dynasty league, which is an extremely competitive league half point ppr no bonus points two teams put up over 100 points uh one of those teams threw up a 124 and that's because they had herbert the Miami defense, Alvin Kamara, George Kittle. Other than that, we had four people put up single digits. The lowest scoring team in this league, which is one of the which has a is a, a good roster, forty six point nine four points, and they had names like Patrick Mahomes, Devonte Adams, Mike Williams. You know, like he always had the people on by, but. Just a crazy, crazy, crazy week. Um, and when I was I was listening to a couple different shows, just like on NFL Network, Good Morning Football, all that kind of stuff, It's I think this is going to be some, one of those weeks where a lot of these teams look at their rosters and go, we need to fix something now because those upsets were so drastic. I mean, when you look at the Saints, are they going to go after OBJ because they need that that wide receiver in order to complete their team? Trevor Simeon obviously looked okay, but he wasn't anything spectacular. The Bills, I mean, usually they're pra- – I was reading a lot of stuff on the Bills, obviously, for a pair of reasons. But they're usually dancing, having a good time at practice, having music. There was no music. There was no dancing. It was business. Uh, so is this the point of the season where you start seeing some of those turns of some of these football teams that have started to struggle? Like, do we now start seeing Stephon Diggs get back involved? Do we see Tyreek Patrick and – and Kelsey just say, okay, it's time to go. We need we need to turn turn it on and, and get moving. Is D Hop gonna come back even though Kyler might be out another week? You know, like these are the things I think that in this part of the season we could see the the stars and studs really start to ramp up because like, okay, we're now five and three. We have some teams breathing on our ass in our division and we need home field advantage. We need to figure this out and figure it out now. So I'm definitely intrigued to see what these next couple of weeks from a fantasy perspective looks like, especially from the stars, uh, the big names, because it, it is now time for these guys to turn it on if they want to get to where they want to be. I love that point because so many times, and I think I brought this up maybe as, as most recent as last week, where my favorite guys to target now in mid-November are those guys who are fighting for position, whether it's atop of a division or in the playoffs, Power ranking, I guess, for a better way to view that, like teams like four to 14, like six to 18. And that's kind of deep. But you know what I mean by that is the touchdowns mean more, the carries, the touches, your impact players, your stars at college just said that means more. The problem with this theory is that usually Thanksgiving has become when the most recent time, the borderline of when teams become contenders and pretenders. Thanksgiving is usually the baseline. For an example here, like the Buccaneers at Thanksgiving time last year were seven and five, and people were talking about firing Bruce Arians. They went on to win the Super Bowl. So the problem is there is no higher – like I don't know who the best team in the NFL is or the AFC or the NFC or how many divisions. From a fantasy perspective, I wish I could – this happens it feels like once an episode – this is a time where we, wish we could offer you some really good advice on guys that you could pick up or how to balance your lineup. It is going to be just as tough as it was in the summer for you the next four to five weeks. You're going to have to find the beat reporters. You're going to have to dig through the matchups. It is not going to be an easy road to the playoffs for any fantasy teams over the course of the next four to five weeks. Chet, I don't know if you're feeling the same way about it that Kyle and I are about. You need your stars to step up. 
and it's going to be one hell of a ride the next month as it closes out the regular season in fantasy. I think the toughest thing for me to figure out are the injuries. Is, is the guys that are banged up, the James Robinsons, the you know Chase Edmonds just went down. It's not these Derrick Henry type injuries where you can just, you know, he's out, he's done, I can move forward. It's these guys that have these, uh, Russell Wilson's coming back. What am I going to get from Russell? What's that do for DK? Chris Carson's coming off IR. So all these guys that are going to be returning, hopefully, to your lineup you've been holding on, do you plug them in right away? Do you feel good? Do you try to trade before the deadline? Do you target those guys? What are you going to get from these guys that have missed a couple weeks and might not be at 100% for the rest of the year? I'm not a doctor. You're not a doctor. You guys can't see my hands, but I'm pointing at you. Kyle, you're not a doctor. <laughs> so, and that goes back to what you said, guys, where you're going to have to really scour these beat writers and try to get a little bit of intel on how guys have recovered, what timelines are. Um, but for me, that's the toughest part is because I, I know all of my, all of my teams, I have at least one guy who's on the verge of coming back or has just returned. For example, I didn't start George Kittle last week. I wanted to see it. And now I've seen it. I just keep he's staying in my lineup the rest of the way. Um, and it was like, you know, Dallas Goddard was my backup tight end. So it wasn't like I threw out a, you know, a horrible tight end, but it was, you know what? I don't know. My biggest fear is when you have a, a guy who's been injured, who's coming off injury, is the guy that plays one series and realize he doesn't have it. The soft tissue injury, the Kenny Galladay play, type play from a few weeks ago, played one series, it didn't feel right. You got a goose egg because of it. Um, so that's for me going to be the most concerning and difficult part over the next month as you make your playoff push is who are the guys you really trust that have you know missed some games this year. And to add to that, it's the name that Kyle brought up, talking about positioning, injuries, guys to make all those plays. Let's go to Odell Beckham Jr. We don't need the graphic for this. I don't want to throw anything off on our visual side. You know the name Odell Beckham Jr. As of this taping, rumors are flying across social media. As of this, unless you guys have seen something different, there's rumors of the Packers, the Chiefs, the Saints, and more, but officially Odell Beckham Jr. has not signed. Chet, I'll start with you. From a fantasy perspective, how do we play Odell Beckham Jr.? Is it wait? Do you claim him? Do you trade for him? What is your move here currently on a Wednesday night of how to handle Odell Beckham Jr.? If you still have him, you wait. He's, if he's still on your bench, you've you've probably at least half your team has gone on by, I imagine. You know, all the big fantasy powerhouses have gone on bye week so maybe you're looking at one or two more times you're gonna have to dig into your bench for a player um i'm not holding out hope that he's gonna be a productive wide receiver no matter where he goes there are teams that i feel more comfortable like if he goes in my opinion to green bay i find that very intriguing um because he immediately becomes the clear-cut number two with one of the best quarterbacks in the league when he doesn't have covid and isn't lying to people. Um, so that one gives me some hope. The Chiefs gives me a little bit of hope as well. But according to some other reports, he's leaning towards returning to his hometown of New Orleans. I don't like that situation. It's, you know, Trevor Simeon's been okay. It seems like people are rooting for Taysom Hill to take over. No matter which guy has it, I don't, I don't see that being a high volume passing offense. Uh, even though Kamara might be now injured. He's another guy to bring up of what do you do with Kamara? But, um, if you have him, I think you wait. If he's on your waiver and you have space, sure. I don't imagine anybody's going to trade for him. Maybe maybe there's someone in your league who is a Giants fan or, I don't know, loves OBJ, was his favorite player at one point. You could try to do that. But I think right now you're kind of just in a stalemate. You know, you're just going to wait and see where he goes. And who knows, maybe he was being held back in Cleveland and OBJ could still be the – you know, all pro receiver we saw in New York. I don't know if it's going to happen. I'm not very confident it will, um, but there is always a chance that he can be the guy. Uh, it's it's pretty late in the season for that to happen, in my opinion. Yeah, I, th I think though, though the one thing Chet mentions is him being the guy. There's only one situation where all these reports he's going to be the guy if he goes there, and that's the Saints. Right. Uh, so that's the one area that I'm sitting here like, if you go to the Saints. I have some hope because there he will more than likely get a healthy amount of targets and he should be an impact player right away if he can catch the ball and run healthy routes and be healthy, whatever. But you go to you go to Green Bay, you're gonna be forming a new connection with Aaron Rodgers, who does what he wants. You're not gonna be able to say, Aaron, give me the ball. He's gonna tell you to go 
go go away pretty much um <laughs> then i was trying to be kind um that's right you did very well there that was good yeah <laughs> then you then you look at okay well what about the chiefs okay you're going to be competing with travis kelsey and tyreek hill not yeah yeah be cole hardman um that is their number two wide receiver maybe he steps in number two but really he's going to be the number three if not the number four option in some situations so i think when you look at obj he's definitely worth a roster spot right now to literally just stash there and hang on to and just sit there and marinate kind of like we said a couple weeks ago when we were getting talked to about obj this is the one situation um maybe in a dynasty where you get him and you just hold on to him because maybe the best happens um but there is no way in hell you can play him anytime soon without seeing it. Um, I'm a firm believer on Chets. You know, I want to see it first, especially with OBJ. Um, you know what he could bring to the table. We've talked about it multiple times. He, We feel like he might be washed. He might be done. Um, and I'm still straight uh, feeling that way. But I think the one situation he goes to where he becomes an immediate fantasy, immediate fantasy relevance would be the Saints. I want nothing to do with Odell Beckham Jr. Nothing. <laughs> I walk you through a scenario I had in the league right now. I had uh, I had Odell on a team in this league, first place, but I hit the bye week, so I had to make a decision. Now this is a league I had Derrick Henry. Okay, I at one point had Saquon Barkley. All right, so I can't get rid of either one of those guys quite yet. I don't feel comfortable doing that. Uh, and I had Odell on my bench, and he wasn't going to play in Week Nine. So I'm like, I got I got to do something. I got to make a move. I just I just can't sit here and let him be the guy who brings down my team. So I cut him because he just hasn't been fantasy relevant in 2021. Now, you guys both make really good points. The right situation, the right time, sure. Can a lot of things change for Odell Beckham Jr.? Absolutely. But I'm guessing with Odell. I want some consistent – I just need it, man. Like, you were so good five years ago. And I, I'll share this while I was telling you guys both in private messages and – some people are going to call me insane and crazy. This is maybe just too much of a media dig answer and less about fantasy. I don't buy any of the shit he's talking about on Twitter with Joe Cinder Anders. I don't buy any of it. Like, hey, uh, well, we're going to get claimed. You better not claim us if you're a bad team. Nobody claimed you. What are you talking about? Well, we're looking through the offers. A lot of teams want us. No, When? Like, they just had a chance to get you. And I know the $7.5 million is a thing. But everybody had a chance to get you. This is like saying you're a high school athlete and you've got tons of teams that are offering, but nobody's offered, but you're just waiting for the offer. Okay, they didn't offer you, man. Like <laughs> Now you got to figure something out. This is not the reality you're living in. So sure, could he land on one of those teams? Yeah. There's also a chance he doesn't. You know, this could be Cam Newton 2.0, a player who's had a great pass as a fantasy football player that's hoping to have an opportunity. And how, like, just, just due to the Packers, for an example – You've got Devontae Adams. It's hard to just step off the street and get chemistry with a player. So I don't want anything to do with Odell Beckham Jr. If you're able to get a playoff berth or a playoff win because of Odell Beckham Jr., petition yourself to win the manager of the year in that league. Great. <laughs> I, I I think you're going to be right. I really do. Like I, If this had happened a month ago, I'd be a little bit more optimistic. But, I mean, we're how many weeks away from playoff time? You know, like – yeah, I don't think he's not. He's obviously not going to play this week. I guess he still has enough time, but there, this week's gone. So then we're in week eleven after that, and yeah, I just there's not going to be consistent enough that you're going to be able to be playing meaningful fantasy football with OBJ. I, I just and, don't. Really it. Go ahead, guy. That's the other bizarre point too. Is kind of to your point, guys. Oh, don't sign us if you're not a, if you're not a good team, but. It's fucking Wednesday night. Why aren't you? Why aren't you signed with a team if you want to play and you have and you have this, that, and the other thing? You, you you're not wanted. You are not wanted. Get over yourself, bud. We'll see what happens. You know, you know what I also love? I also love that you know these Twitter reports that Gaz is mentioning. You know, OBJ wants to play for a winning team. The Browns were a winning team. <laughs> you talk your way out of a playoff team, like. You, don't, you only say that when you're leaving Detroit or you're le leaving East Rutherford. I want to play for a contender. You just left a contender that plays better without you. Like, <laughs> get over yourself, man. Like, come on. Who? Which one Which one of you said that? that I think it was you, Chet. This, and now that you say that, it, it, it just resonates. Odell Beckham Jr., bud, you are Le'Veon Bell 2.0 right now. Yep. Yep. 100%. A guy that... 
was legit. Like, seriously in the conversation for wide receiver one. But that was years ago. Like, you know, left his team and, and made all these – I don't know if Odell was as you know loud as Le'Veon was when he left Pittsburgh. But, you know, like, it was everyone else's fault. You know, Eli wasn't good enough. Big Ben wasn't good enough. Well, it looked like life was pretty good when you were with those guys, wasn't it? And now it hasn't worked with one team. And now here you're going again trying to find, you know, essentially on the streets just like Le'Veon was. And their names are always going to have an appeal. It's always going to catch our attention. Like when we look on the waiver and you see Le'Veon Bell, your eyes stop for a second. And you're like, wait a second. Am I missing something? Oh, no, he sucks. I forgot. He, he sucks now. Like, and that's what we're going to get out with OBJ. Like, a former perennial top two round pick for, for three years, whatever it was like, and now it's a guy you can't even put in your lineup. It's, it's amazing how quickly some of these stars can fall. And two things that it perfectly circles around. The first thing is that if he does end up signing with the chiefs or the Packers, we mentioned he's likely to miss two games. Chiefs and Packers have a week 12 and a week 13 bye coming up. Ooh, so you're good. already guaranteed another miss on Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah. And also in that league, as if you guys knew it, uh, when I cut Odell Beckham Jr., I was desperate for a running back this week, and I signed Le'Veon yeah. Bell. And I signed Le'Veon Bell. <laughs> I love it. One man's trash is another man's trash. It is incredible how fantasy football running backs even goes to the guys in the media league. Man, you just get to the bottom of the barrel with running backs. You get to running back 25, 30. You're staring at that spot. You're like – Man, I should have handcuffed somebody. I have something. <laughs> Booker for the Giants has been fine. All right, so let's get into the – we got a trade coming up here. I like a trade. We love trades. We get a trade offer Ooh. proposal in the mailbag this week. We're going to dive into it before we get there. We're going to tell you why the mailbag is sponsored. It's by Johnstone Supply in Troy. Cannot wait tomorrow. Probably when you're listening to this drive around, I might be hanging out with our guy, Tom. We got a co cool meeting coming up talking about some 2022 plans. Either that or he wants to talk about his Titans and his fantasy football strategy to take us out. Either way, head over to 6th Avenue in Troy and say what's up to him and the great staff there, Tom and Kev and James and George and everybody who wants to help you this fall and this winter to make sure your home is heated properly. All your HVAC needs are right there at Johnstone Supply in Troy, helping the capital region in upstate New York for decades. They can do it now for you. I know the number by heart now, 518 Two seven two five nine two two. Look at this. I don't need to look at notes. I never do. Five one eight two seven two five nine two two. That's the number. Johnstone Supply and Troy. Contact them today. Follow them on Facebook and social media if you've got any questions. And if you want, you've already got the easy warm step in to talk about fantasy sports with him. As we like to say, he's got the best mustache in the business, baby. He looks like that Virginia closer. Tom and George and everybody there wants to help you trust people when you're trying to change those big decisions in your home the place to do it is johnstone supply in troy all right eric sends this one in eric is our first time writing into this podcast we appreciate you offering this up eric says guys i'm desperate for a wide receiver i'm offering this trade do you think it's a fair deal and will this person say yes i'm offering chase claypool and antonio gibson for terry mclaurin Half point PPR league. Is there a chance I can get Terry McLaurin by trading Chase Claypool and Gibson his teammate? Uh, yeah. I'm gonna let. Oh, oh, go ahead, check him first. Yeah. No, I like that. Uh, I think that's a fair trade. Gibson is another one of those guys. I feel like the more we talk on this show, it brings up another guy that has the injury bug concern and you know what his health percentage is. But without seeing the other guy's lineup, I mean, that's still a valuable running back when running backs are a rare commodity. If you look at Terry McLaurin, because I've also been eyeing him in a few leagues, he has not been extremely consistent. There have been some very low outputs from Terry. I love him as a player. I think a lot of it goes to quarterback play, and that's just kind of his situation. Like I, I hope one day Terry McLaurin gets just like a Pro Bowl. I'm not saying all pro. Just get him a Pro Bowl quarterback to like play an entire season with. But anyway, um, I think that's a pretty fair trade. Like Claypool is in a an offense where, you know, without Juju, it, it's really we saw a little bit of you know James Washington this past week, but it's essentially Deontay Johnson and Claypool with a little bit of Firemuth in there. So that's a guy that gets good targets. I think that's a fair trade for both sides, and without seeing their full rosters and. 
you know, people love to sit, you know, complain about another team took advantage of another team in a trick. I think that's very fair and it, it could get done. Yeah, I 100% agree. I think that's actually a very good trade. And, and the main reason people will be like, oh, Gibson didn't hurt. Uh, guys, Washington had a bye last week. Right. So what does that look like for Gibson getting a little bit healthier? Um, he's desperate for a wide receiver. I made a very similar trade a couple weeks ago um, where I traded Eckler for Diggs and Williams for the Chiefs. So, like, it's all about that kind of stuff. And I love the trade personally. You need that wide receiver. Terry McLaurin is going to get you eight points every week but then he has that definite potential to go off for 20, 25 points. Um, and kind of like chess point, if I'm not mistaken, I think Fitzpatrick is still supposed to come back this year. So obviously if Fitzpatrick comes back, I think McLaurin's value goes way up because I think we can all agree that Fitzpatrick is a better quarterback than Heineke. So um, Love me I, I really like the trade and I don't see why if the other guy is especially desperate for a running back and he's a plethora of wide receivers, I don't see why you wouldn't take that trade. My only concern, again, we go back to not having not seen it. Who are your other running backs if you're willing to give up right. Gibson, who was likely your second round pick? Um, and, and all the running back injuries that we've mentioned, maybe he's dodged them and, he, and he's got, you know, an RB1, RB2 locked up already. And if he does, good, you know, that, then I like to trade even more. Just make sure you're not trading away, like one step forward, two steps back. You don't want to do that. I, I get what you guys are saying. I think it's a very even trade. Maybe it's just the week it's coming. Like if this trade was a week before or two weeks previous, I w I'm with you guys. I say yes to this. But as of this taping, Gibson is limited in practice. So you know what? Don't accept it till Saturday. Like you don't have to accept it Thursday. You can wait till Saturday. See if Gibson's going to suit up. Because in that game in particular, if you get Terry McLaurin in that trade, I feel like Bucks football team. God, I hate doing that. Just get a name, Washington. That's going to be a really high-scoring game from a fantasy perspective. Yep. Tampa's coming off a loss in New Orleans and a bye week. And remember, Heineke, I think Kyle just said this too, Heineke had that big playoff performance against Tampa in the wild card round last year. So he's matched up well against the Buccaneers. So potential could be great. Now flip back around to Chase Claypool, the chat point brought up there. Monday night, that tight end, Fairmuth, two touchdowns. Oh, yeah. Najee Harris is probably going to finish this season as maybe as high as a top seven running back, even though he's a rookie. He's pacing for that. So I wonder if someone gets scared off and just says, I don't know what I'm going to get out of Claypool. But to what you guys said, it's a very fair deal. If you're targeting Terry McLaurin, that's about as good as you can get as an offer. You just wonder if you waited too long or you're hoping that uh, he gets an injured Gibson instead of giving up a healthy Gibson for yourself. Right. It's been funny. I actually had another friend text me um, a trade proposal that I, I can share with you guys and see what you guys think. This one's a two for two. Would you, which side do you prefer without knowing the other situation? Aaron Jones and Amari Cooper for Clyde Edwards Elaire and AJ Brown. I'll go first because you guys know my love affair. My pictures are up in the room right now of Aaron Jones. So, uh, I would sign with the Aaron Jones thing just for the fact of the two guys he mentioned on the other side, Clyde Edwards, he Lair, and AJ Brown. Uh, health for both of those guys. Like he uh, look, Gore was fine and Williams is fine. Like not breakout. Oh my God, can't miss players, but maybe a flex for both of them if you have the opportunity. AJ Brown, he is not. I, I got a text from somebody who told me this. He has not been as phenomenal as he's been in past years, which made me feel good that they remember that nickname. But that's what it's been. Now, could A.J. Brown have a monster end of the season without Derrick Henry? Absolutely. But the same also could be said here for Aaron Jones. If Jordan Love gets another start, I lean towards Jones. But Amari Cooper, my God, I think me and Kyle have the same reaction uh, on the visual side. We're like, ugh, uh, another guy who – there's not a lot of trust in three of those four players in that deal. Yeah, I don't know really what to make of that one, to be honest. I mean, yeah. I feel like you're not getting anything. Like it's it's it literally feels like a net neutral trade to me. Um, maybe you are desperate on the wide receiver end, which I mean, if you're giving up Aaron Jones and Amari, you're upgrading with AJ Brown. In my personal opinion, specifically right now in the in the Titan situation. But on the flip side, if you're desperate for a running back and you're and Aaron Jones, like I, I don't know what to think of that. I mean. Because, yeah, with Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, you're getting a guy, you know, that, does he come back this week? Is it next week? 
What are, what are they going to need out of him? I guess one one benefit for Clyde, um, I don't have a lot of stock in Hilaire this year, but for people that people that do and that have stuck him on the IR, the Chiefs have struggled mightily. Right. And I'm not saying that's a direct link to there being no Edwards Hilaire, but you know, I think Williams, we've kind of seen that you know what his ceiling is as a running back. Gore had a great drive. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but this offense needs help. Like it, it needs to find its groove again, and maybe they incorporate a little bit of Edwards Elair when he comes back. You know, get him back into ten or you know fifteen touches a game, um, and that offense can get rolling again. But I mean, that's you're putting a lot of faith at this point of the season in Edwards Elair if you're trading for him. So that's the only thing I get hesitant for people that for the I guess on the guy that's giving away Aaron Jones, you might not get anything in return with Edwards Elair. It's really possible. You know what? Let, let's add one other thing to that because you mentioned the trade offer at both. I think we do have to offer or get your guys' take. I know you guys are all over the world, but how much, if at all, did you see of Jordan Love? And is, are we done? Like, there's no fantasy perspective right on him yet because I know last week, I think we asked about Jordan Love if there's any. T- I'll tell you right now, I'm done. Like, no, I think he stinks. I think he's terrible. I don't think he's, I don't think he's worthy of regular football. I mean, this is a miss. This is a bust because, like, if this had been year one, Okay, we knew this might be a project. We've seen other rookie quarterbacks this year, you know, have some s- scary throws. Well, the Zach Wilsons, the uh, Trey Lance look very raw. This isn't your first year. You're a professional who is, should have been developed for a year and a half now. And I couldn't – your screen passes were ugly. Like, didn't look like you understood how to play football. So – I'd be really nervous if I'm a Packer fan right now because the Aaron Rodgers tenure is about to come to end, to an end and you don't have an answer because that ain't it. That was bad. We actually were able to watch that at Texas Live, um, and we were wincing for most of the time as we were in that bar. Yeah, I as you mentioned that screen pass, I am literally pulling it up for the visual side, and I'm hoping that I can get the replay because if you didn't see that throw, it was abysmal. And I, it was not even a two-yard toss that should have just been a nice, easy foot. I could have thrown the ball, and I'm a terrible throw. I see, I see better throws every Friday night in the Capital Region for yeah. high schoolers. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm being dead serious. Yeah. It was that it, bad. It was a shot put throw. It was a heave. So I'm out. No Jordan Love. I 110 percent agree with Chet. The first round draft pick this year, Aaron Rodgers. I think we all can agree is probably gone after this year. Out of out of out of the Packers organization, that first round pick better be a quarterback, or you better find a way to get another first round pick if you can somehow keep Aaron Rodgers. Like, hey man, your tenure is coming to an end. Jordan Love isn't the answer. I'm going to get you X person with this first round pick, and I'm going after this person with this first round pick, or whatever it may be, because the Packers are in serious trouble when Aaron Rodgers goes away. Yeah, and it's a franchise that's been truly blessed with quarterback play from the days of Brett Favre. You know, people looked at the Colts and said, you went from Peyton Manning to Andrew Luck. How about the Packers going from Favre to Rodgers, two Hall of Famers back-to-back? And yeah, I know it's one game, but that chief defense we've mocked on this podcast because of how dumb and open guys have been, it just wasn't there. It's a big difference from playing against the WAC competition at Utah State to playing against the NFL and I love how Kyle mentioned that the first round pick should be on a quarterback. I can feel Aaron Rodgers going on somebody's show when he's on a different team, and the Packers using a first round pick on a wide receiver and just finally giving Rodgers the help, even though it's not Rodgers, it's love for that 2022 draft. Do All right, let's we, go ahead, Chad. Yeah. To start um, rethinking how we draft rookie quarterbacks. And I just say that because I think we had high hopes for multiple guys this year. And uh, Dynasty is different, where you, maybe you're getting this guy and you're, and you're in it for the long haul. But for redraft leagues, I mean, is you can you trust anybody? Like, I mean, these guys, I feel like in every dra- league I was in, some of the first backups taken were Justin Fields, Trey Lance. I don't, I don't know if there was a lot of Zach Wilson coming off the board. Trevor Lawrence was drafted sometimes as, as a QB1. For teams, not as like number one QB in the league, but you know, like a guy that you tar- do we just need to realize like football's really freaking hard and like it's very, very rare for a rookie to come in and make an immediate impact and be good, just consistently good and, and especially in fantasy because the turnovers are almost always they're going to be the guys leading the way. 
I I couldn't agree more with that point. I mean, we've seen it the last four years with some of these rookie quarterbacks. Josh Allen got his ass kicked his rookie year and his second year, to be 100% honest. Sam Darnold sucked. Uh, yep. When you look at um, um, the quarterbacks this year, you look at, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Kyler didn't have a great first year. He proved he could run, but again, he still struggled with throwing them. I mean, Herbert, I guess, I guess Herbert was a rare, Herbert was a rookie. Oh, yeah. Yep, Herbert. Herber. So, that, so that's what, one out of the last 10 that we just mentioned? Like, I just don't know where, if it's worth that dart throw. No, I, mm. I, I, I think you're being generous with the last 10. I, like, when you're thinking, like, because I, I, I immediately, my brain just says, oh, yeah, Patrick, no, he said. He, he didn't play. Exactly. Exactly. And so, yeah, I don't know. I think, I think we just, we go through all of those months after the Super Bowl where we just kind of get brainwashed and we see so much draft coverage and we hear about these guys and we see them throw in shorts and t-shirts and cutoffs and headbands. And we're like, Ooh, look how good that guy looks. Oh my God. They're saying he's the next Mahomes. I can't miss out on that. Yeah, you can. You really can go with what has been a proven commodity and you'll be fine. Don't just don't bank on it. If you're like, you know, your last pick of the draft, you want to go after Trevor Lawrence or something. Okay. Do that. I'm cool with that. To reach in the tenth round, so much better value out there. You're wasting your time. Yeah, and to add to that, a rookie quarterback thought process. One other thing on Darnold. You want to talk about terrible? What? What's the stats? Been four touchdowns and ten interceptions since he's been with the Panthers. Jet fans doing cartwheels now that they get a second round pick and everything they got. He's horrible. That's a good offense that Brady and Rule and everybody else are running over there in Carolina. Sam Darnold looks terrible. I got about maybe a handful of quarterbacks who are good in their rookie year the last ten years. Uh, Herbert, who we've already mentioned, Baker Mayfield, who technically came off the bench, though, for Tyrod Taylor on that Thursday night. He set a ton of records. RG3 was really good, and he got to start yep. week one for Washington. Um, Andrew Luck was fine. Cam Newton was fine. Joe, Joe, Burrow. Joe, Burrow, until Joe Burrow. And he got hurt, and Joe Burrow got hurt. So it's like it's basically you're looking at, what, a 10% chance you're going to get it right and be a consistent starter for the entire season? That's a tough ask for these and even, rookies. And even you know consistent – even that might be too strong. Like you're getting, you're like these are guys that, you know, can I guess survive a week. Like you're you're looking at a lot of numbers in the teens. Like the twenties are rare for those guys. Um, you're just hoping, yeah, because again, the turnovers are always high. Even the guys that play well, they just defenses look different. They're faster. They fumble. They inter. Yeah, that's. I guess I I'm even kind of learning. I'm like, you know what, man? Like let somebody else reach for the the project quarterback who because like well people said that trevor lawrence was the best prospect to come out in in a decade Ugh, yeah they just beat the bills they put up nine points like it's not him like it, how many how many i don't have the number in front of me but i'm guessing he's been top 10 for a week once maybe maybe once my guess well and then and then i think kind of like you were talking about the hype and everything like that like we don't hate the the receiving core in Jacksonville. I mean, shit, right. that's been terrible in a, a big <laughs> But the receiving core is not like it's trash. It is It is. Trevor Lawrence is not ready for the NFL. He has all the mechanics. He has the body build. He has, he has everything. But he has the hair. It is a... It is it is like playing JV football and then going to college football. That is the jump from college to NFL. No I like that. What you're playing. I like that a lot. That's a that's a good that's a good analogy. And it's crazy. Once you, once you said wide receiver, I thought Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase. Like it's a totally different discussion when we talk wide receivers yeah. and quarterbacks who are rookies and running backs fall here and there in between. But I mean, if you go deeper back to the days of when Saquon was good and Zeke was good, and yep. now Leonard Fournette wasn't terrible his rookie season for the Jags, and he, he had some other things happen. But like they put up numbers as running backs as rookies and everything else. So. Uh, starts and sits coming up here. It's been a really fun way to do this in 2021 because we've kind of touched all these different bases here. If you're a fantasy football player who has a season long league, if you're a fan dueler draft king player, you're finding these matchups. If you're going to Rivers Casino and playing the fantasy over unders, which has been fun doing this part of it, all those things can happen with our starts and sits this week. We're doing projections for that. Before we get to those picks, we want to tell you about investing, making sure your money is going to the right spot in 2022, whether it's your business, your car, whatever it might be. Jared Lozier of Northeastern Insurance is your guy. He's a Colts fan. He's awesome. I'm talking about Jonathan Taylor and Jared too, but they're both great right now. The Colts are playing good football, and now Jared wants to make sure you're ready to go 
to make sure everything is right for the next year. Give him a call today, 518-956-3753, 518-956-3793, or email him, Jared, J-A-R-E-D-L, at nemail.com. My goal is to have Jared's email flooded with fantasy questions and podcast questions. Just go Colts and a title and then nothing in the body. Please, it would make my day if you just email Jared. J-A-R-E-D-L at nemail.com. Title it, Jonathan Taylor's the best, and that's it. Just do that for me. Northeastern Insurance, you'll find out more about how he can help you for the rest of the year and in the future. Jared Lozier, Northeastern Insurance. Starts and sits. Uh, usually, this is where the host, the one chair, whatever you want to say, Leads it to you guys. I'm jumping the gun like I always do every week. All right. You guys know you're waiting in line. Gazi Bears got some hot starts or sits. Ooh. <laughs> and it goes right back to that Washington Tampa game. I love everything in it. I just want nothing but points. I like Heineke and I like Terry McLaurin, but more so Heineke than anybody else. I like uh, Heineke's right now. The Tampa defensive secondary is ranked mid range 12 to 14th, depending on your scoring in most leagues. Yahoo's 14th. But like I said, Heineke tore it up against Tampa. He's going to be ready to go. He's going to want to find his receivers and show off to people what he can do. Heineke's got to be close to getting a rushing touchdown again, too. I'm sure he's still mad about that weird dive he had a few weeks ago against Denver. Heineke is going to beat that number. He's a great fantasy play, and you flip it over. We had Broncos Washington a few weeks ago where I thought it was going to be a high-scoring game, but the Washington defense has been nowhere close to where it needs to be. And one more time, I'm getting Tom Brady – and Bruce Arians off a of bye week after a divisional loss in New Orleans. Hell yeah, they're going to light it up. Fournette, top seven. Washington's given up the most to fantasy football running backs. Godwin's top six. Love it all. Give me Godwin. Give me Fournette. Give me Heineke. Give me points. I love all three of those guys. Quarterback, running back, wide receiver plays across the board in Washington, Tampa. Woo. That's fire. I love it. Um, Oh, I'm doubling down, man. It's been a rough go of it. I was hoping to see some nudity from Gaz at the end of the season. <laughs> this is the week. This is the week I think Mike Williams does something. Just something. Get into the end zone again, my guy. Uh, facing Minnesota at home. Minnesota's 27th against wide receivers in fantasy this year. It's not like the Chargers haven't been able to move the ball. You know, it's a lot of Keenan Allen last week. The tight ends got involved. Let's get Mike Williams going again. This is the last week I leave him in my lineup before I have to make a tough decision. Because it's been, if I'm not mistaken, three games in a row, almost identical of five targets, two receptions. That's not fantasy relevant. You can't keep doing it. This is my last week. Come on, Mike Williams. Bonus wide receiver pick. I think I'm back on the Brandon Ayuk train. I was no, Chad, not no, 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 again. No, 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 Chad, no. Full break, break. <laughs> nope, I think I'm on it, man. I, cause, and here's the thing. It wasn't that he wasn't playing well early. He wasn't playing. He wasn't giving like, – they weren't giving him a chance, and that's what was making us so confused of, like, what did he do wrong? Who's – wife did he sleep with like what what happened <laughs> where i you just can't play get on the field now um he had a nice game last week and then going up against the rams this week this is where you have to check out with your beat writers maybe check out some espn people that study this if jalen ramsey is scheduled the shadow on oh my gosh just show blank of his name debo samuel it's i chance like i think the rams are going to lead in this game if Ayuk is not getting the treatment of Jalen Ramsey, I think he can have a good game against the Rams, and then maybe it builds some confidence that you can keep him in your lineup. My sit for this week, James Robinson. I don't, and this, we're film, filming this. I guess we're kind of filming, even though it's still just a frozen picture <laughs> of myself staring at Kyle's nuts. Um, James Robinson. Actually, I'm kind of looking at the Johnstone logo on my screen. Um <laughs> James Robinson coming off the injury. Do they rush him back? Does he get a big workload? He's questionable right now. He might not even play on Sunday. It might make it a lot more clear for you. But if he's that game time decision, that classic, we're going to see how he feels during warm up. I'm out. I don't, I don't want it. I don't want it. Cause I don't, why would they give him a huge workload with where their season is? It's not worth it for a young running back. 
who just missed a game with an injury. So that's a guy where I'm out for now. I want to see him have get back and have a 10 to 15 carry game where I'm like, okay, he's fully healthy and ready to go. I absolutely love, love this set because I was thinking about that exact option. Um, but for my starts this week, um, I got a deep list, actually, ironically. So number one for me is J.D. McKissick going up against that banged-up secondary, coming off a bye. Um, what, what was it? His target share over the last uh, three games has been really high. So, I, of course, I just closed it out. I think it was like <laughs> 8, 10, and 6 or something like that. Um, so look for J. I I think J.D. McKissick is going to have a great game. They're going to need to throw the ball, I think. That Washington defense is not ready for what Tampa's about to about to do to him. So I love JD McKinsey this week. I told Chet this at the Dallas game, and I am going with it. Melvin and Javante are must stars this week. Ooh. Um, going up against, I know Eckler did not have success this past weekend uh, rushing against that Eagle that uh, Eagles uh, rushing event, but it isn't great. And Melvin and Javante have literally continued to prove that they are a very strong one-two punch. Javante is the better running back, and I do not understand why Denver just doesn't use Javante Williams. Melvin looked very good just banging and grinding last week. Javante obviously had a couple big plays, but I love starting them both. I think you're not going wrong if you start them in your RB2. I don't quite think they are uh, must-play RB1s. I think they are definite flex plays 100%. Put them in flex, you will be happy. Um, but I think they are definite good plays for RB2. Um, I'm going to go after what I said last week. Uh, continue to start the Friar Mute, please, and thank you. And then um, I don't need to say much about that. Oh, that killed me, Kyle. I lost the game in fantasy because the guy against me had him. Oh, it hit a Monday night football loss to the tight end with double touchdowns is heartbreaking. I felt it. I thought of you while I was watching my team burn. So brutal. And then my oh. last – my last one, which a lot of people are probably going to laugh me a little bit on because I have stuck by this guy, and it's not shit nuts. I have stuck by this guy wanting him to break out. Wanting Wait, him- let me guess. Jefferson from the Chargers? No, no. Oh, okay. No, it's not Palmer. That's Palmer. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. That's right. Uh, he's, he's still on waivers. <clears throat> We're not going to talk about <laughs> Russell Gage. Ooh. Had, a, had a good game last week. Eight targets, uh, 10 points. I think the big question is who is going to get digs? Is it going to be the 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 I don't know how to say his name, um, or is it going to be Russell Gage? Um, and is it finally time for him to take over with the eight targets? The Falcons are going to need to keep up, um, keep up with the Cowboys. I think the Cowboys are kind of come out with a vengeance next week after getting blown out by um, Denver. So I really like Russell Gage this week. I am trying to figure out how to work him into one of my lineups, and it's going to be. Easy if Godwin stays hurt uh, with that with that foot issue, um, but I do like Gage this week. I think he keeps keeps up where he left off last week, um, going against that Saints defense and having a good game. So give me a little bit of Russell Gage sprinkled in there. Yeah, please don't get hurt. I need you in my play. All right, I need my Tampa <laughs> team to look good. I got two sits this week, and I feel like I'm stealing one from either you or Chet. I could have sworn one of you guys had this within the last three to four shows. That's Tyreek Hill. Especially, look, if you're in a season-long league, Tyreek Hill is not going to your bench, unless your team's that great. But that, that's an ultimate play. But, again, back to the Rivers Casino fantasy plays. We're talking about situations of fan dual draft kings where you're paying a high price for Tyreek Hill. The matchup he has against Vegas, Vegas has been pretty decent against the pass. Tyreek Hill in half-point PPR leagues in our Godzilla Media League has had a week of four points, seven points, nine points and five points. There's only been nine weeks of the season. Half his games have been below 10 points. So Tyreek Hill, be careful what you're doing with the chief wide receiver because that entire offense hasn't been good. And DeAndre Swift, the Lions get Chet's Pittsburgh Steelers after a bye week, and we'd say most teams would benefit from a bye week. DeAndre Swift got the big graphic feature because a running back was out for the Lions, and it was going to be DeAndre Swift day. They were going to get their first W. Philadelphia killed him. They destroyed him. He wasn't a factor in the game. As DeAndre Swift has had his moments as a fantasy player, but this isn't his week, man. Those are my two sits, Swift and Hill. Um, my big my big sit for the week, which a lot of people might struggle with, uh, do not play Jalen Hurts this week going against going against Denver. Do not play him. Uh they are he Jalen has a very similar style to what Dak does, and Denver absolutely just ate Dak alive outside of those last seven minutes of the game. So 
Um, Jalen has been dangerous with his legs. That Denver defense somehow looked better without without Von Miller. Um, and I mean that defensive line is still very good. I mean that Dallas that Dallas offensive line is good, and Denver just ate all game. I think they had like five sacks against the Cowboys, something crazy like that. Um, but not a big fan of Mister uh, Hurts this week. And then my other sit might it's not, not not might not affect a lot of people. Don't play Emmanuel Sanders this week uh, going against the Jets. Um, I know I mentioned it earlier in the show. Um, just reading a lot of what Bill's beat reporter is saying, I fully expect them to go back to the grinding game that we saw last year. We, they are back to business as normal. I think this is going to be a massive Stephon Diggs game. Um, I'm thinking two touchdowns, well over 100 yards, a 30 point performance from Diggs. And the reason I say is they need to get they need to get that offense back on on track, and this is the game to do it. And this is where if you're Brian Dable. You're, you are the number one head coaching job, job candidate coming out of this year, and your stock is falling because of what this offense has done. Um, they get a couple – they have potential to get some of their offensive linemen back and Spencer Brown and John Feliciano, so that means more time for, for Allen. Um, but I don't think Emmanuel Sanders is going to see the target share. I mean, for God's sakes, Cole Beasley over the last uh, couple games had like 30 targets. Um, he's just been an absolute target machine. Um, and like I said, I think this is Stefan Diggs game where it is, Hey, screw the run. I'm going to throw it to Stefan Diggs 20 times. I'm going to throw it to Cole 10 times and we'll try to sprinkle in some Sanders. Oh, and don't forget if Dawson Knox comes back, there is less yeah. time for Sanders. So, um, that's kind of what I'm reading. Uh, I'm not a big, not a big fan of Emmanuel. I think if you're going to swap and swap him for Beasley, uh, but I'm not, I'm not on the Emmanuel Sanders train this week. A lot of talk of our favorite teams, Chet. We talked a little bit about his Steelers, my Buccaneers, your Bills. I like when we have more invested in our teams we root for with a fantasy tie. It just makes us a little bit more stressed out during the weekend. So hopefully you listening, you might have a connection to your fantasy team and your favorite team for the upcoming weekend. Chet is done judging us. He had that look on his face for 45 minutes. If you see the name of this podcast this week, it is that judgment face for 45 minutes. So Enjoy fantasy this week. Enjoy the NFL action. Uh, Kyle is going to be spanning the globe like Carmen San Diego. Follow him on social media. Who knows where he's going to end up eventually very soon. Uh, get some sleep. Enjoy the weekend. And we'll be back next week. See you, my dude.